Uh, last night at about 6.30, we had a shooting on Marquee Drive, uh, what we would call a drive-by shooting. Um, patrol officers responded to the area, and they were in the area. At about 9.45, we had another shooting drive-by style on Mercury Drive. Patrol officer there uh, saw the vehicle that was involved, got into a short pursuit, and patrol officers were able to apprehend three suspects from that shooting. Uh, Mr. Taekwon Ford, 18 of Dothan, Jalen Aristotle, 18 of Dothan, and DeAndre Culver, 18 of Dothan, have all been charged in that shooting. No one was injured uh, during that shooting. The investigation has progressed, and Mr. Aristotle and Mr. Culver have now been charged with the shooting that occurred on Alexander Drive where the 12-year-old was, was shot. Uh, this, is, this is a credit to the investigators on this case and the patrol officers that were in the area that were handling the business. So. I have pictures of these three men that are charged. This investigation is continuing. Further charges are expected. Uh, and we will be not stopping until this is completely fleshed out and uh, these acts stop in the city. Is there any questions? Yes, sir. The relationship between the two houses, if known, the two houses from last night. No, we don't have a, a, a direct relationship between the, those houses. Um, this seems to just be bad behavior uh, by individuals that are, are lawless. They just they, they don't have any any care for anybody's safety. That includes children, adults, grandmothers. They they don't care. So we're here to take them off the street. Were there people in both houses at that time? Yes, there were. You'll have a list of the charges that, that will we'll document shooting into an unoccupied vehicle versus shooting into an occupied residence, things of that nature. Uh, attempted assault first, just a myriad of charges. We'll have a list for you. What is your concern, to be candid, if you'll look back over the past three or four years, so much of our violent and fatal crime has occurred in generally the same area? which is what's referred to as Ford Country, Mercury Country, Wiregrass, a recreation area. As chief, your concerns about so much crime in a concentrated area and what the police department, and I'm not talking specifics, could do to quell that crime or are doing to quell that crime. <clears throat> Crime pops up in different in different areas. I'm not gonna not gonna label any particular neighborhood as being crime ridden because that's just not accurate. Uh, when crime occurs and we see these things happening in certain areas, we put our resources there. You know, if you want to pick apples, you go to an apple orchard. If you want to catch criminals, you go to where the crime is. Apparently, last night uh, Dothan runs from call to call to call because listening to the call volume, officer can't th get through one call before another. Apparently that patrol officer was either going from a call or just had just a few minutes lull that happened to be in that area. Is proactive patrols to where you concentrate, do y'all need that, need that in place to help stop some of this? Because y'all, 17,000 calls a month with the volume of officers on duty, it's hard to be proactive watching for stuff. Right. Proactive policing is an important part of police work. We dedicate as much time to it as we can. Um, it, it's my feeling that we need more police officers on the street to handle uh, some of our, our proactiveness. Um, we have a strategy in place. I've been in close contact with the city manager and commissioners. Um, I have the full support of them, and we're going to get it fixed. So just to be clear, there were two drive-by shootings last night. Um, were these suspects related to the first shooting? <coughs> we have not put that together yet. Okay. We have evidence that suggests that, um, but we will be working to flesh that out, yes. Okay, were there, were there anybody injured in that shooting? No, there was nobody injured last night. Okay. Did these people, I know you don't know about the first shooting, you're still working on it, do you have any knowledge? Did they know the people in the house or were they just randomly shooting in houses? <clears throat> We're not ready to release kind of that that motive yet. Um, there's still some investigation that needs to go on uh, for that, um, but we will determine that. Uh, what I want to stress is, is these police officers right here putting their lives on the line, taking these shooters off the street, 
And now it's incumbent on the DA's office and the judges to make sure that these people stay in prison and off the street. Well, she should be candid. You know they won't. Um, no, I don't know that, Jim. One other thing, people get amnesia when y'all go to a call. Oh, I didn't see anything. Oh, I don't know anything. The, say something about to the people about how they can trust the police department and contact y'all with information because without the citizens' help, y'all can't solve everything. Right. The, I, and I said this before, that a police department is ineffective if they don't have the support of the community and information. Our communities, we have a, a very good working relationship with the members of our communities. We need their help. They can call Crime Stopper 793-7000 anonymously and, and give us information anonymously. We do pay for information. Um, you know, it's a real anti-snitching kind of uh, mantra going on, and we need to change that. It, it's not snitching if you're protecting the children of your neighborhood from getting shot. How did y'all um, locate and apprehend um, three suspects? There was a patrol officer in the area that heard the shots fired and chased the car down.